efforts to address the shortage. He pointed out that over the past four years, the government has received the green light from eight district councils to build columbariums, providing some 500,000 niches. He expects hundreds of thousands of new public niches will become available from 2019 to 2025. Budko stressed it wasn't easy getting district support to build them because local residents were concerned about the traffic and environmental impact the facilities would have on their neighbourhoods. The government has been promoting green burials, including the scattering of ashes into the sea and at special remembrance gardens to ease pressure on the city cemeteries. Co said those promotional efforts will continue, adding that he's willing to have a green burial himself. Last year, the Food and Environmental Hygiene Department carried out more than 4,000 such burials, accounting for nearly 9% of all burials. In June, the Ombudsman criticised the government for being too slow to provide more public columbariums, as it has only built two of the 24 planned sites over the past five years. And last month, the Town Planning Board rejected a proposal by Kerry Warehouse to convert one of its warehouses in Chai Wan into a private columbarium, providing some 82,000 urn spaces. The government has been urged to provide more support to elderly carers of mentally disabled children. This comes as the body of a 77-year-old woman was found in her home in Sha Tin days after her death, with her mentally disabled son unaware of what had happened. Adam Shu reports. Firefighters broke their way into this apartment late last night and found a woman's body after the police received a report of a stench coming from the unit. Police believe the elderly woman passed out about seven days ago and eventually died after failing to receive any treatment. She had been living with a 48-year-old son with mental disabilities for about 20 years on comprehensive social security assistance. Labour Party lawmaker Fernando Chung said lengthy waiting for daycare service and a nursery home place, as well as inaccessible community support, are to blame for a tragedy like this. He suggests having social workers providing door-to-door -door service for elderly parents living with mentally disabled children. Adam Shu, TVB News. A survey has found that subdivided flat tenants in Hong Kong faced a higher rent increase than other private housing residents in the past three months. Rachel Leung has more details. Currently, more than 190,000 people live in subdivided flats in the city. Miss Ngai is one of them. She pays $3,500 a month for her rent. That's about half of her monthly household income. The group platform concerning subdivided flats and issues in Hong Kong together with the Caritas Institute of Higher Education visited 68 households living in subdivided flats over the past three months and collected rent data. Then using the 2015 rental level as the base value, they formulated an index that reflects changes in rental and electricity costs faced by these residents. The October index stands at 398, a 13% rise when compared with the same time last year. The hike is almost twice as much as that for private housing. According to the survey, rent increases for subdivided units were especially steep in districts with well-established transportation networks, such as Kwai Chung and Chin Wan. Lawmaker Edward Yu, who's also an advisor to the survey organizers, say the monthly rent can account for up to 70% of these families' total household income. As the landlord would try to test the water, and normally they would try to ask for a much higher market rent, and then try to check whether those newcomers would be able to afford. The landlord can make the best use of their information and try to cut their size to the minimum and then charge the maximum affordable rent. The groups also suggested the government should use abandoned schools and vacant civil servant dormitories to house families who are in need of a decent place to stay. Rachel Lang, TVB News.